But important things do happen during this arc. Numero uno is what happens to Impmon. Because if you remember, Impmon was like beaten up and uh, looking for a way to make himself stronger without, you know, relying on the help of humans. So this magical light starts talking to him and the magical light transports him to the digital world, to the domain of one of the devas. Um, and he says that if Impmon pledges to eliminate uh, Takato, uh, Giyoman, and the others, that he can give him the one thing that he wants most, which is ultimate power. He's weighing his options, either betrayed the people who he was kinda sorta friends with and saved his life, or gain ultimate power. And he opted with ultimate power and I guess you could say sold his soul as he falls into hell, and he re-emerges as Beelzemon. A gun-toting, super badass, mega-level Digimon who gains a motorcycle during an episode which I just don't deem important at all, involving Takato and the others. And throughout the second arc, we'll keep cutting to him, like, you know, testing out his new strength or sometimes interacting with the heroes. It's, it's leading up to something totally awesome. But what else happens during this arc? Okay, uh, I already mentioned Beelzemon being born and getting the motorcycle. Um, then we also see Kalamon just bouncing around the digital world. Yeah, he's, he's having fun, being chased by stuff. We also see the monkey David, you know, trying to find him. Um, then there's this part that I like, which is uh, where uh, Rika finds the flag that Takato made, planted in the ground, meaning that Takato and the others are probably in the area. Um, and she tells Kenton Kazu to stay by the flag to see if they come back while she goes investigate something. These two manage to screw that up by not standing by the flag and instead wandering off on their own only to have Rika find them. And uh, here's the funny part. Uh, if they had waited like five minutes or so, they would have actually run into Takato and Henry who came back to the flag looking for them. And then Kentun Kazu managed to screw up even harder by getting all of them sucked into another beam which teleports them to the other end of the digital world. I hate these two. But that is not the worst part of this episode. No. Uh, because they get attacked by this Digimon. And Rika, for some reason, cannot get Renamon to Digivolve into Ultimate Level to handle this, so they're about to get killed. But then they get saved by... Then they get saved by... I can't do this now. I need, I need some help. Hold on. Yeah! This big row in the studio with four sound! Ha! I told you that this shit hot and we produce a heat rocks and I can tell you that you about to hear gunshots when we in the studio you know we ready to go and knock you boys out like we go to Mexico I told you right now I throw the right cross send you on the ground and I'll tell you throw a left cross send you on the ground so what you want to mess with cuz right now we about to tell you that you mess with bullshit we on real shit yo we on some trill shit yo we on some hood shit yo we on some good shit what the Fuck you on, boy. You ain't doing nothing. And right now, from the cops, we is running. Cause we stole hip hop. Kidnap that bitch, put her in the back of a van, and tied her up quick. And okay. Now I'm ready. They get saved by Rio. Now, who is Rio? Well, without starting a comment war about his origins. I will tell you how he's presented in the show. He is Rika's rival. Because if you remember, I said that Rika was the second best Digimon card player in Japan. Ryo is the first. He is the Digimon king. And of course, Kanta and Kazu worship him. And do not stop singing his praises for the rest of the episode. Now, I have listed 
many times why I don't like Ryo. Um, why I despise him, why I think he is a cancer on the series, why I think he is the worst character ever developed, um, and, well, I'm not gonna list those reasons here now, I'm gonna save those for later. So if you're not entirely sure as to why I don't like Ryo, I suggest, um, you can either go back and watch some of my older videos where I discussed him, or, um... Just wait until I get to the character sections, because we're going to talk about him for quite a bit, I imagine. We do learn that Ryo apparently has been in this digital world for quite a while. And he's got his Digimon here, Cyberdramon, who just growls constantly and wants to fight all the time. Anyway, they have a bonfire together, and Rika, knowing Ryo, is just a boring, shallow, hollow shell of a character. I, I, I mean... Rika not being able to comprehend the pure amazing awesomeness and coolness that is Ryo decides to go off on her own um, and ditch Kenta and Kazu because they just insist on being close to Ryo all the time so they can just heap more praise onto him. Anyway, Ryo continues his amazing exploits as he effortlessly guides Kenta and Kazu to their lost friends. Something Rika could obviously only dream to do. Then he continues to demonstrate his superiority by single-handedly defeating a mighty dragon Deva before gallivanting into the distance, off no doubt to go cure cancer and win the Super Bowl. And Ryo's out of the story for a little bit. Okay, let's try to speed through this a little more. Okay, so next episode, uh, we actually gotta go see what's going on in the human world, and we see that even though Yamaki does not work at Hypnos anymore, uh, Hypnos is still running. And in fact, they're about to start up the Juggernaut program again. We also see that Rika finds Kalamon and manages to reunite with the group before the group gets attacked by Beelzemon, who they discover is Impmon. And then, the, guess what? The Juggernaut program doesn't work again. And in fact, it causes a storm that separates, well first off, it manages to save uh, them from Beelzemon because he gets scared off by the storm, but um, the wind blows Kalamon away so that he gets picked up by a Deva, so we lose Kalamon as, just as quickly as we got him, and it also manages to blow away Henry and Takato into separate teleportation things. But then Yamaki comes in and pretty much saves the day and stops the Juggernaut program from destroying everything, I guess. But we're pretty much back to where we started with um, not only a hunt for Kalamon, but a hunt for characters that are missing from the group after getting sucked into teleportation portals. So this arc has just pretty much gone around a giant circle. And then after this, we have an episode that's supposed to build um, Jerry and Leomon's relationship, and that part's fine. It's pretty much the plot to that uh, old Japanese legend about the eight-headed snake, uh, Arachi. So if you know that legend, you pretty much know the plot to this episode. But the big important thing that happens is Kazu becomes a Digimon tamer. Because there was this Digimon, um, Andromon, who was trying to fight Arachi-mon, but kept losing because he's weak. And he de-digivolved to Garjamon and... Kazu, I guess, became his tamer. I would complain about this, but uh, Garjamon's actually kind of funny. And also, I like to see, like, uh, Digimon types that are usually just, like, f just grunts that get knocked down by the dozens. You know, actually kind of have um, a more meaningful role in a story, like uh, Nightmon in, uh, in Cross Wars. You know what I mean? But, okay, now this season gets a little complicated because uh, Henry and Takato are together and after Henry pretty much describes the concept of the Matrix to Takato, they manage to find a sleepy ghost-like human who they find out is Shibumi, one of the original monster makers who they think is responsible for passing out the blue cards and who apparently Maki was hunting for. So he's here now, and remember that uh, Digimon God in O2 that, you know, had that huge exposition dump? Well, it's got nothing on Shibumi's exposition dump. Because he claims to have created everything. 
including Takato and Henry. First, he explains the digivices are what he calls arcs, which are mainly just there to store data. Then he explains what digi-gnomes are. These little white things that you can kind of see flying around. I, I didn't mention them because they just didn't seem that important to the plot. And how they like can they build things and like can grant wishes or something. And how they built Giyomon. And then Takato says, oh, so does that mean that Giyomon was specifically created for me? And then Shibumi responds, well, how do you know you weren't specifically created for Giyomon? And then he explains that, like, the devas aren't evil because they think they're protecting the digital world from the humans. And that, like, good is only, like, a point of view. And that the new evolution of humanity and the Digimon will only come when the digital world realizes that it cannot separate from the human world. And they begin working together to create a new, better world. This is a very complex episode. Because I'm a sci-fi guy and I get a lot of this stuff, but I could see, like, this could really lose, especially young kids. Because in the beginning it starts off with the whole, like, Oh, uh, as long as we don't think that the water will drown us, therefore it won't, because it's a computer world. And therefore, the only limitations it has is on the limitations we give it. Then there's the whole, who was created for who? Were the Digimon created for the humans, or were the humans created for the Digimon? And then, maybe the Devas are the good guys if we think about it this way? It's, it, to me, it's kind of like if Morpheus... Koizumi and Palpatine all tried to explain their ideologies and beliefs in one episode and then just tried to tie it all together and relate it to Digimon somehow. And I kind of like it. It makes sense in that sort of sci-fi way. It's just that it's so much exposition and talking all at once, it, it can seem a little bit much. But enough of that because we've got to get to really important parts of the story. Like Susie becoming a Digimon tamer. But uh-oh, her Digimon partner is a Deva. How is this gonna work out? Well... After the Deva realizes that one of his Devas is consorting with a human, he takes away all of uh, her powers, making her a rookie level. Oh, it's Lotmon. Um, and um, yeah. Henry hitches a ride from Shibumi, um, and they meet up with Susie and unite. Yay. 